Lindenwood uh, head coach Jed Stuger, team coming off a come from behind 43-40 win against Western Illinois, a future OVC Big South opponent there uh, next year. Uh, this week they're going to Illinois State, so uh, a tough opponent for them. They were just ranked this last week before falling to EIU. So, Coach, some thoughts on your team, then we'll go to some questions. Well, we had asked them to respond or how we were questioning, you know, how are they going to respond after our first, uh, you know, lat the week before at SEMO, uh, where we didn't handle the, the environment very well. We didn't handle uh, getting punched in the face right off the bat. And uh, so then we had, you know, question marks of this team, last year's team uh, would respond to things where we would, we're a little cardiac kids. We could, we came from behind to win uh, a, a few games and got us in the, on the winning record side. So now the question was, does this team, how do they respond? And, you know, when the, when the game started, um, you know, second play of the game, big play, um, you know, we, we blow a coverage, you know, just eyes caught in the backfield receiver gets by touchdown and um, we go back answer, go for it on fourth down in the yard. We don't get the first down. So we, they go back down to score again. It had that feeling of here we go again. And, uh, and uh, you know, not a whole lot of panic on the sideline. I, I think coaching wise, we just kind of kept going, but we went into halftime 17 points down. And I think that's where I felt like our team grew up. I think seeing in the locker room, having the offense and defense uh, talking to each other in the locker room, taking accountability for their sides. You could see a lot of support and belief at halftime. And, you know, I just simply challenged them because um, that's the number one text I got from our fan base and everybody is you know everybody assumes there's some magical halftime speech that happens and I just laid out honestly I just uh, said you know here's historically what they're averaging scoring this many points on the third quarter and this is how many they're scoring in the fourth quarter and we get the ball back to start the second half and if you go down and score I think it's going to creep a little doubt to close it up to 10 points and and some of that battle creep in and, and our guys really, uh, bought in, um, you know, Cole grew up a lot, um, uh, Saturday, uh, started making some plays with his feet instead of forcing some balls, which I knew coming out of SEMO, he's a quick study. He'll learn from mistakes, um, you know, through another pick. And then after that, he, he, he just said, you know, look, he, he used his feet to escape, made a long 30 yard run to, convert a first down that set up our first score in the second half. And then uh, you could just feel the momentum shift. Our sideline started believing and our defense really rose up, held them to nine points in the second half, as opposed to, I think, what, 31 in the first. So, um, you know, so real proud of just how our team responded. Um, we are, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to be across the board better than everybody we play right now. Um, we have – we have guys that are better than their opponents uh, on our team as well. Uh, you look at Jeff Caldwell, he's a big time player. Um, you know, um, we have Giama. We have a lot of guys. We got guys on the O line that that can play at this level. But across the board, we still have guys that are going to have to overachieve, going to have to over prepare, are going to have to to uh, realize that they're going against just better athletes right now. And so, when you have heart. Um, that can overcome some of those things. And I think uh, at the end of the day, that's what our our guys saw, that they can do this. Um, and then we got to stay real humble that we haven't proven anything by this win. It's a great win. We grew up, but the schedule just gets tougher from here on out. Thanks, Coach. We'll go to some questions. We got Dan with uh, Prairie State Pigskin covers Illinois schools. I think you've talked to him before. Uh, we'll start with him. Yeah, Dan. Well, Coach, nice to, to see you. Yeah, nice seeing you too, man. So – you just played Western and, you know, they played Illinois State already. Does that help you at all looking at the film that, you know, common opponent? Sure. Yeah, I think that helps. You know, you, you know, because you kind of see, uh, I don't really look at score different, uh, differentials like, and, and say, okay, this should happen. Um, but I saw Western Illinois play them very tough in the first half um, and, uh, you know, didn't as much in the second half. But you know, that, that always helps us to kind of gauge, you know, where we kind of saw where we're at against a, a SEMO right now. Um, we kind of saw where we're at against the Western Illinois, which I think we're probably evenly matched in a lot of ways, which means we're still 
you know, we're just not out the caliber of an Illinois state. Just when you put us on paper right now, we're a, you know, we've only been in this in our second year. So now you have to figure out as a coaching staff, how do you best prepare them to take on a very good opponent? Um, we have enough guys in the room that have uh, did that last year, had some upset wins against teams we weren't supposed to beat. And so, um, you know, you have to really understand and respect your opponent and not fear them, but you have to respect what they do and then try to figure out some some weaknesses that you might be able to expose. And and we're still, to be honest with you, we, we're, we're still game planning all the way up till 2.30 our, our team meeting today, um, you know, figuring some of that stuff out. But uh, it'll be another good test for us to see how our guys respond. It's our third road trip in a row, um, handling the road. Um, they handled it really well last week. And uh, but three in the row, three in a row is really tough. We'll see kind of, you know, how they handle that as well. I'm sure you're well aware Illinois State's pass rush. Is that your biggest concern? Sure. I mean, they they're very good up front, um, very good defense. I mean, it's uh, you know, they've got uh, uh, athletic, quick twitch guys. You can see it um, be a good challenge for our offensive line because I feel like that is a strength of ours right now with this offense. We've got some veteran alignment and they're doing a pretty good job. But we know. Uh, the challenges of that persi- that that that, that pre- present us, and and uh, that's one of the things that kind of stick out to us when we were watching film. Uh, especially, I I tend to being a defensive guy, I tend to spend a lot of time watching offense, but got got a lot of time to watch their defense uh, yesterday um, and a little bit this morning. Very good defense. I got one more for you, and then I'll turn it over to Kyle or whoever else might be on. Um, just the fact they have that pass rush and they and they do like to walk guys up from the secondary quite a bit does that change your passing approach I know for example you know I, I was at the game last week when they played Eastern Illinois Eastern threw a lot of you know quick routes although they did hit some big plays on their touchdowns well that's kind of built into our our offense a little bit in the progressions anyway and so um you know um offensive game plan um you know you want to you, you want to always kind of, you know, we want to be able to run the football. Um, we feel like we've got a really good running. we got a little stable of backs that can that are pretty good, and I think our old line's doing well, and we know that that's going to present a, a challenge. And so we're, we're going to try to still, you know, we always go into games feeling like we, we can – we need to be able to run the ball to set up some of that stuff you're talking about. But, you know, when you're – you know, anytime you're facing a real active, physical, uh, very good defensive line, that's usually the – that's where the core of a defense starts. You know, when you've got a very good defensive line, um, it, it, it solves a lot of problems. Sometimes you can play more pass coverage because you don't have to pressure, um, you know, so, um, but yeah, we're kind of in the, you know, I think that always takes a little pressure off being a, a former defensive coordinator. Anytime people are, are kind of dinking and dunking you and kind of chewing up little yardages and keeping, drives alive doing that kind of it, it can get a little frustrating you know because you you know those are harder to defend when you're 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 a little bit quicker in the past game and saw that a little bit what eastern did to them a little bit but uh, that's always kind of built into our plan thank you very much for your time and, and, and answers thanks dan appreciate you i wanted to ask you about jeff caldwell have you ever had a receiver catch five passes and four of them go for touchdowns I, I wanted to look that up it seems unbelievable I don't I don't think so Kyle I mean we we've had uh we from my time here and even Sioux Falls we've had some pretty good receivers but I think uh yeah I don't know if uh I don't know if Peyton la you know last couple of years of Peyton had a couple of days where he got maybe three but I don't think uh I don't think we've ever seen that before but uh you know, especially on that limited amount of catches that go for touchdowns. But, you know, he was taking hitch routes and things like that for touchdowns that typically you don't take a hitch route for a touchdown. But uh, he's pretty special. How has that chemistry with, with him and Cole and, and your other receivers been so far now? And you've had a variety of, of uh, levels of opponents in this year too. Well, I think I saw, you know, I don't think Jeff and Cole played with the uh, – when I talk about young guys growing up um, – like last week against SEMO, I think we were a little wide-eyed. And so when I say growing up, um, they just kind of played with a little bit more confidence this week. Um, and I think that helped, you know, helped Cole, it helped Jeff, it helped some of our – Spencer Red was kind of an unsung hero um, in, in our receiver core um, because of, you know, two or three 
big time catches in traffic, getting hit to convert first downs that enabled us to go down and, and take a lead. You know, there's a catch that he made uh, while he's getting hit, about ball bounced up. He still grabbed it and converted a major first down for us. And so Spencer, and he had a long, uh, you know, long kickoff return that really got a spark going for us to answer in the first quarter when we were um, down 14 and all of a sudden it enabled us to go down and get our first touchdown to kind of get back in it. So Spencer's kind of been an unsung hero too, a little bit as far as just, uh, you know, with the numbers Jeff had and everything. And also just Robert Giamo, just in what he's doing, being pretty consistent. But uh, yeah, you can kind of feel a little bit of their confidence. I think it's a, it's a humility about them. They know that we're not, and nobody's going to lay down for us. We're going to still be looked on as the the new team, the D2 team. It's kind of – it was fun to see our guys, you know, last week when the crowds and student sections are chanting, you know, D2, D2. You know, it, it, I think that affected us at SEMO. Guys were looking up, and I think last week to hear that, we hear it every week. I, I think now it starts to – it gives a little bit of reminder. Those are reminders to our team that, hey, we, we got to play up to – the best uh give the best efforts that we can because you know a lot of these guys were recruited as d2 players and so we don't really take it as an insult i think it's a little bit more of a reminder for us so um i'd encourage them all to cheer cheer d2 as much as they can last question i'll let you go just talk through the the last drive so you talked about you know what you challenged the, the halftime and and you know getting the scoring in that confidence so you got the lead and you fell behind what's going through and you know that last possession like hey we're going to drive down and win this game I think people can understand this. Like I, you know, I just had this feeling at halftime. I just, when you heard the, some, I've been in locker rooms before uh, when I've been a position coach on a team that maybe, uh, you know, wasn't completely healthy when it came to crossing over to offense and defense. There was a lot of finger pointing. Um, to listen to the amount of accountability uh, it was almost like one of those things like, no, it was our fault. No, it's our fault. No, it was our fault. You know, you're, you know, it's like you just kind of had this feeling that we were going to win this game. And and uh, I've had those feelings before. And and uh, and when you have them, it's like, you know, we just kind of had a belief. And so um, that last drive, I just, um, you know, every, the way everybody was picking up pressure, the way we were, uh, Cole was throwing, the way we were catching, um, even we had to wait on a, on, a, on a review to see if we got a first down because it might have been a fourth and short. Uh, we had had the play call. We I knew without a doubt we were going to run the ball and get a first down where we didn't in the first half because our our confidence just looked different. So uh, a lot of key plays that were made in that final drive. But, you know, at the end of the day, there was still – our defense did not have a great day in the first half. Their confidence was sh shaken. But to end that game, they had to come out and, and stop a drive to get down to the, – so they didn't kick a field goal to go to overtime. And, you know, our defense uh, – you know, our D-line made pressure quarterback, and we got a sack. We got a tip ball to end the game defensively. Um, so, really, they kind of put the icing on the cake for us to come out and, and get a get a four and out uh, so we could kneel on the ball and end the game. Coach, uh, thanks for your time this morning. Best of luck this weekend. We'll talk to you again next week. Thanks, Kyle. Dan, appreciate y'all.